Hey folks, in this video, we're going to look at dev containers, and this is just an open spec that was created by Microsoft. So uh, they've built some tooling around it, as you might expect, because it's by Microsoft. It is first and foremost built for VS Code and Visual Studio, uh, but JetBrains tools like IntelliJ also support this. And there is a NeoVim plugin that can also support this. So there are ways to use this if you're not using VS Code. Anyway, let's take a look at how this works. So I've got this dummy Django project, and I've got a Docker file here that just sets up some basic things. You know, it's using a Python base image, sets up poetry, and installs my dependencies. So pretty straightforward. But the meat of this is this .dev container, and then the dev container.json inside of it. And this is where you define the spec for what your dev container is going to look like. So I'm giving mine a name. I'm pointing this at a Docker file. I'm telling it what to do after the container has been built, I'm specifying some attributes so that in this case, when a port 8000 is exposed, it's actually going to open up my browser. And then I've got this post start command so that when this is actually started up, it will kick off the uh, Django development server. So pretty straightforward. If we take a look at the JSON reference page, there's a whole ton of fields that you could actually fill out, but in most cases, you're not going to need really most of these. But let's see how this works. So down at the bottom left, if you're using VS Code, uh, you have this option for new dev container. And this lets you create from one of the existing templates. I don't see these as being too useful, to be honest, just because you're going to want to configure things your way. And effectively, to create a Docker container that has your minimal configuration really isn't, you know, it's just a few lines. To me, it's not too useful, but you will have this uh, container options that you can actually build from this dev container. Also, if you do the command shift P, uh, if you type in dev containers, you'll see there are a whole bunch of options. So in my case, I want to rebuild container. So it's going to build and it's going to open this up. This kind of operates the same way as if you're using a remote development environment with VS code. But as you can see, things got started up. It actually opened up my browser with this app that's been uh, started. So it works pretty smoothly. I will say the debugging in this is kind of annoying. If you configure this incorrectly, it does kind of crap out and doesn't throw the most useful error messages. But that being said, the configuration options really aren't too challenging. All right, so we can see it's opened up this terminal that is running that active process. But if I open up another one, we can see that this is also, this is the ID of that container that I'm in. We have full access to all the files in this workspace. As you'd probably expect, this is just truly mounting this directory. So if I do hello, ls, we can see that hello is in there. Remove hello. Now that's no longer here. So you can treat this just as yet another workspace. You really don't need to think about this as yet another thing to care about. But the beauty is by virtue of having this alongside your source code, every time you make a commit and you want to roll back to that version, you're actually pulling that version of your development environment along with that version of your source code. So you'll always be in sync. One thing to keep in mind is as you're effectively treating this as a remote environment, these IDEs like VS Code, because the, the plugin architecture runs some things on the server and some things on the client, a lot of things aren't going to be available out of the box. So if I hit like manage.py, you see it's going to say, do you want to install the recommended Python extension? The thing is, I do have the Python extension installed on my client side, but to actually have it run on the server, I now need to either install it like this, but it's not very repeatable. So what we can do is go into the dev container. And so what we can do is we can add another section here called customizations, and we can do VS Code. And then there we go, it's trying to autofill for me extensions. Now let's take that, but we'll get rid of a couple of these. So I just want the Python one. And there we go. So we can see once I rebuild this, it's, it acknowledges that, hey, something has changed in the dev container.json. can rebuild this. There we go. Everything is restarted. And if I go over here to my extensions, you can see I've got the local installed stuff. But if I go down to the dev container, we now have the Python package installed. Pretty neat. Um, the other thing that you probably want, like if I was to go to the manage.py again, see there's this little thing that says like auto import configurations. So currently, it's not doing auto import completions. So we can turn that on. Type checking completions true. Uh, 
type checking off rather, turn that on. And we'll see that this is dumping that into the local VS code settings.json. One of the interesting things is I could actually remove that from here. And I could, if I wanted to, also define that. I can def uh, define that here. And so now let me delete this from the .vs code, rebuild this. There we go. If I go back to the Python file and I click on the little bracket, we can see that this is still turned on. So it's nice because this means now everyone that's on the same development team that's using the same dev container can have the same consistent set of configuration options. Is that really any different than having it in the .vs code directory? Not really. It does keep things consistently all in one place, which is nice. So that's kind of the basics of this, but there is some more useful things like, so there's this additional option you can use for Docker Compose instead of just using a Docker file. And to me, this is incredibly useful because this means that we can spin up a Postgres database or whatever other services you need alongside your application. So that way, every single person on your team, when they're spinning up the development environment, will get the exact same set of services, all available at the same locations, and it's just, everything is consistent. So that's really nice. There are some things that I don't think are quite as useful, like there's this dev container features. So in your definition here, you can set up a features, and if we go back here, you can see like, okay, I want uh, PHP. I don't know why you'd want PHP, but hey, you do you. But you can set these things up and it'll actually layer these things on. So if you started with say an Ubuntu or a Debian base, you could layer these on and compose your own dev container. Again, to me, since you're already working in the container world, I really don't see that there's a ton of value in not just building it yourself with the Docker file. Uh, to me, this it just seems like a, a decent supply chain risk where you're unnecessarily using all these random install scripts from random people. I mean, it's probably going to be fine, but you know, it just doesn't seem worth it to save a couple minutes. To be honest, I think that the real value in this comes from both the team aspect, so getting consistency and also being able to jump back to a previous iteration from, let's say, a year ago, uh, getting that exact instance set up. I probably won't be using this just because I tend to use NeoVim and it doesn't seem like the NeoVim configuration is quite as solid as it is with the VS Code version, but I'm still gonna be exploring other options. I've seen quite a few tools in this space that I wanna play around with because reproducible development environments is just such a nice thing to have. It just means that you don't need to think about how to set up your environment. And for every new project, if you're using the same effective setup, you can just copy and paste and be off to the same state. All right, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.